God, we will, uh, because we must remember that we are competing with a uh, with load shedding, and therefore it is important that uh, we try and uh, and utilize the time that we are having. We will then, uh, in welcoming everybody, I see the deputy minister is here. Uh, welcome to him. What we will we will do, uh, honourable members and all our guests, we will uh, allow Mr. Sakaza to take us through the roll call. I am going to switch off my my camera. At least you see that uh, I am a. I am, I am in order and appropriate for the meeting. Thank you very much. Over to you, Mr. Sakas. Thank you, Chair, and good morning to the portfolio committee members, uh, the DM and the department. Uh, Chair, we have today the following members present. We have uh, Honorable Chair Dunjwa, Honorable Nonsele, Honorable Volmarans, Honorable uh, Makubele, Honorable Mdabe, I see is just joining in now. Uh, we also have Honorable Mkondo, Honorable Begram, Honorable Kado. I, I received uh, chair, uh, uh, an apology from Honorable Zuma, who is uh, a bit sick after the vaccination. Um, from the department, we also received a, a, an apology from the minister who was attending the cabinet meeting. From the support staff chair, we've got myself, Oshia, Tebuho, the researcher, Tolelwa, and Bongselinok. Uh, uh, thank you, chair. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sakaza. Uh, from the from the department, who's going to just quickly do a, a roll call? I got uh, okay. I I did get uh, I got a call, an apology from the the DG, who has got a challenge. Uh, there's been a burglary, and uh, a person who was looking after his property has been shot, but fortunately he is not, uh, has not passed on. He was still waiting for the police to come. So he did say that uh, he will de delegate uh, uh, somebody uh, to the, who's going to lead the team. Can we get that, uh, the roll call from the department? Good morning, Honorable Chairperson. We've got the COO, Mr. Ms. Masha Brokost, who can do that. Thank you. Over to you, Ms. Bronkov. Is she in? Yes, I'm she's in. Yes, I, see, I see her name here. Yes, All right. I think. Is Why a is she senior muted? after the DG, unless otherwise she, she's muted herself. Uh, maybe we can request a Mayor Gimwila, uh, our Inspector General, to do the roll call for uh, the department. Thank you. Over to you, Inspector General. You, Thank you, you Honourable Chair, audible. Honourable Minister. Good morning to the Honourables. Am I not audible? You are now. Okay. I was still saying thank you, Honourable Chair, Honourable Minister, Honourable Members of the Committee and colleagues. And thank you for the opportunity. Um, in terms of who's here from the big department, we've got um, Ms. Bahumi Matevesi with the DDG Corporate Services. We have Mr. I would advise you to switch off to, to, to your, your video. 
so that it does not interfere with the, with the network. The CFO. Thank you, Chair. I've done so. Um, we also have Matapelo Mataboche. Um, we have Ms. was the uh, parliamentary liaison for the department. We've got Mr. Zandi Mueli, who is from the office of the DM. I think I also saw Mr. Sam Rotoba, although I'm not seeing him on the list now. I check those are the people that are from the department. Broncos could be struggling with connection, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, GM. Do we have any? Uh, <laughs> do we have any uh, visitors? Input. No, 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 Chair. Thank, thanks so much. There are many um, in here who might not have been. Uh, they will introduce themselves as we go on. Marsha Broncos' uh, system has just crashed. Uh, she couldn't even get out and get in. She just left now. Uh, she's trying to reconnect. But she, she requested that we start with CCMA presentation so that she tries to come back uh, in the meantime. Not about chair. So I would, I would uh, uh, without uh, wasting time, request the chair that to allow uh, I see from CCMA, but I don't know who else from CCMA is there, but who can make the presentation while Marsha Broncos is trying to log back into the, into the uh, platform. Thank you, Chair. GM, this is our meeting. Uh, just to say that it has crashed, then we see what to do after that. Uh, members, we will uh, we'll start with uh, uh, the, 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 the Dell uh, person who's going to present. Uh, uh, the system has crashed, so we will then uh, uh, allow the CCMA. But before that, I would have thought that uh, I don't know whether is there any any brief overview from the from the ministry before we start with CCMA. Over to you, GM. No, no, um, um, Chair, thanks very much, but I've not prepared any uh, input. I would ask that we go straight to the presentations. Thanks. I will make my inputs when we close. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, CCMA. Can we get a... A, a person from CCMA who is going to to to, Good to make the presentation. Morning. Good morning. Can you hear me, Chairperson? Yes, yes, I think we can hear you. Okay, I'm trying to. I was planning to represent after, but it's not a problem uh, in terms of the slides. Um. Let me just quickly make the adjustment. And then I will then share the screen uh, for presentation. Uh, you indicate, Chairperson, if you see the slides already. Uh, let me just click on sharing. You should be able to see the slides. Uh, right now. Can you can members see the slides? I think all members can see the slides. Am I correct? Members? If you can see them, Chair. Yes. Okay. You correct. You correct, Chair. Okay. You may continue. 
Thank you, Chairperson. Um, good morning, Chair. Uh, uh, good morning to the Deputy Minister. Uh, good morning to members of the committee, my fellow members in the department, um, with all protocols observed. Chaperson, the, the the presentation I will not, with your permission, Chair, uh, go into the detail of every little detail on the presentation. We, 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 my, my team is here, and I, I can I, I can also state here that uh, when we field question, the team is here. Uh, we will we will deal with the questions at the end. Um, I will go to certain specific slides with your permission, Chairperson. If more detail is required, we, we can provide. Um, and then we'll take questions. The parts that I think, um, with your permission, Chair, not to deal with, it's the founding provisions that creates the CCMA and also the vision, mission, uh, I will not deal with that with our, uh, the pillars that creates the APP, I, I shall not deal with that, it's there in the slides. Um, and then when we get to the measurements of our performance, uh, I will not go into you know, the percentages allocated to the separate targets. I think it's going to be quite a long presentation if I go that route. I, I wish to avoid that um, if, the, if the committee so allows. Um, but I will deal with the key aspects of the APP 23-24 as we are completing the 2022-2023 at the end of this month, the 31st of March. Um, so that's the approach I think I will, I will take. I will then proceed to talk about just briefly on the total budget that we have and also the specific allocations in the separate programs. Uh, which are like five of them, not mistaken, not six. Um, so th that's the approach I think I will take, uh, Chairperson. I'll just rush through some of the slides that I've, I've just mentioned. Um, having said so, just by way of introduction, uh, because we're talking APP 2022, 2023, 23, 24, sorry. Um, in the normal course, we, we do the midterm review, which is submittable to the department and in the uh, also, and also to the Department of Monitoring and Evaluation, um, which we did, Chair. Um, as a consequence of that, uh, Chairperson, you may not be privy to that report. We will share. If it's if it's permitted, Chairperson, we will share the report of the midterm review of the five-year strategy because now we're in the fourth lap of that, which has specific findings and specific recommendations that we must look at. We have already developed an intervention plan um, on how we are going to act on those specific issues they've raised um, on our performance. Um, to date. It's a good exercise which gives you an indication on how we are doing and how we are likely to do. Um, and we have already started to operationalize some of the recommendations which are made from, from that assessment. I undertake, Chairperson, um, in this portfolio committee, if it is of interest to the committee, um, that the documents that is called the, the, the review um, be shared with you. Uh, that is just by way of by way of introduction, Chairperson. Uh, now let me proceed to, to the slides. Um, it, I, I will not talk much on this slide, save to say that just a confirmation that in the third bullet, that we are in the fourth lap of the imp implementation of our five-year Imvoselelo. Uh, the revival strategy. 
Um, and also to just confirm that uh, we are still we're still in on track in terms of in terms of our priorities, in terms of our performance. This particular APP that we're presenting, uh, as is the previous one, uh, that you know the 2022-2023, we have 31 uh, a key uh, performance indicators, but they are key targets for us in terms of our statutory mandate and also both the discretionary functions and the non-discretionary functions. So we are on track there and we are presenting to you um, 30 um, of those very important uh, targets. Uh, please note, Chairperson and members and the Deputy Minister, uh, that the targets we're presenting, they also cater uh, for the Essential Services Committee, as, as the members know that it is part and parcel uh, of the CCMA in the context of dispute resolution. Uh, let me proceed then, Chair, talk to this slide. As I said, this is just the foundation uh, on the enabling legislation that creates the CCMA. And also this talks about our mandatory functions, which we have presented. I know that the members are quite privy to this. As you can see, it also includes the, the essential services. And these are the functions which we call the discretionary functions, which we do as an add-on, although it is contained in the act. And you may find in section 115 of the LRA. And then these are all the legislations, not complete, but these are the core the, uh, uh, um, legislations emanating from the constitution, which are regulating the system. So we're not gonna talk about that. Um, and then our vision and mission, Chair, I'm not, we, we, as we spoke, we're not going to present that. And our strategic pillars will be found in our presentation. We've presented that every year. Uh, they haven't changed, including our, our important programs, which also you will see in our budget. It's allocated to the five programs uh, that you will see also in the budget. We've always done it like that. But these are the programs which constitute what we do. In addition to that, um, the programs that we do must be aligned uh, to the government's outputs or programs. And we have classified them according to that. And the detail is there, Chairperson. The same would apply in slide 13. I'm going to the detail and, and the content of that. Uh, they haven't changed from last year in the previous years because consistent because it's a five-year program and then here we're just linking the pillars with the program so there's we won't waste your time on this but it's a very important one if you want to see how we how we link them up in terms of our pillars and our programs that we do and and which then culminates into our priorities now as we normally do we do this um, external situation uh, external and internal situational analysis because the operation of any entity in any country operates within a certain context when you develop targets and what you want to achieve it has to be in line with that you must be quite present on what is happening in the country so that that which that you said is also in line with that uh, this is one of that i will not go into the detail of that i think it's the general information just to confirm, because we're presenting an APP for the, you know, for the year. So this is important, just the members to note that external situation and analysis. This would also culminate into, into PASTEL with all those important elements from political to legal. So we've applied that as well. In terms of the internal, this is just a breakdown of the capacity and the human resources that we have uh, in the execution of the strategy. And then if you look at now at this interesting picture of the five-year process of the referral of cases up to 2022, you'll see how the graph looks like there. And then we come to projections. The, the bottom line of this slide is just to show members 
that we are anticipating at least up to 194,000 cases in terms of referral, which it will be an increase. It, it fluctuates. So on the projection you see from the provinces, uh, the highest being the Western Cape, sitting at 32%. And then you will also see followed by the KZN, which is at 26%, and then followed by um, Gauteng. And then lastly, Northwest, which is sitting at 16%. These are just projections which informs um, how we draft um, our, our APP. Where, where our strengths lie and our weaknesses lie and our threats and opportunities sits in our SWOT analysis, which is what we do in order to make sure also that we keep this one in check so that when we draft an APP, it must sit on a good foundation. While we are conscious of what our strengths are and our weaknesses or opportunities and our strengths. I will not take that you into the detail of that. Yeah? Then we get to the this this part, which is, uh, this is the slide chair. I said I will not go into the detail because there has been just a few adjustments in terms of increasing a percentage there, but it's also limited to what we can afford to do. So changes that you see uh, where there's, there's changes in terms of percentages, you, you just need to focus on this slide on 23 and 24. Uh, because those were those are the new targets. So, so I'm not gonna uh, take you uh, into the detail of each target like I requested, Chairperson, with your permission. The same will apply in this slide. We are still constant on how we how we project our um, with an important emphasis, Chair. As I said that we're talking 31 targets. That ours is is not so much about how many targets we do, it is high impact targets. That which, if it's done, we can see that it changes society. We can see it, it makes an impact on users. That's how we select them. And some of the targets are quite difficult targets because they have dependencies and people we depend on to assist us uh, to, to achieve those targets. Um, for example, if you have you want to achieve an orderly collective bargaining process, you need all the bargaining agents to cooperate with you. And if you want to be proactive um, in this program, um, in terms of the you know our proactive engagements, if you want to do pre-bargaining conference, you need to have parties to agree. If, for example, we say now in the public service that we said, all the public service unions in order to prepare for the next round of negotiations in the new year, can we engage before the actual and before the actual bargaining process? Uh, for that to succeed, it will definitely uh, depend on cooperation from the other side. So that's basically what we mean by that. So I, I'm not taking into the detail, Chair, with your permission. And the same would apply into this slide on the same program, program two. Um, and the third part of that program, this is where it ends. We have made just one or two adjustments, but that will be too much detail to share. Safe to say that we do uh, confirm that we have made just a few adjustments. And then you've got program, program four has the same thing. Um, as the other ones, um, it's very important here because this is where the core business is sitting. Um, this is where cases are sitting. You'll see that we've pitched it at the same level, 99.9. .9. Basically, it's 100%. Um, now, in 23, 24, we're sitting at 98. That's what we are targeting. And, in, and given the challenges we have, which all members know, post-COVID, limited resources, and, and wellness issues and smart principle target setting, what is realistic for us is, is 98% because you're talking about cases that are run at national, provincial and regional level. And also with, with the total number of the commissioners that we have, the total number of cases that we have, venues we use the online processes that we use. Online is good, but 
it has its own challenges and limitations. So it's a realistic target that we think we are setting there. I'm talking to the one specific because this one has to do with cases, both, both dispute of right and dispute of interest. So we've set it quite high, uh, the standard there. It's a very, very high standard uh, that was setting in terms of achievement. You will see here in terms, this year we're setting 100% um, in terms of the section 73 uh, on resolved dis disputes under the improved service quality. Um, yeah. And the same applies here. Uh, this is page three of the same program. Um, again, Jefferson, you'll see here also each job saving um, will always be part of our program. Uh, you see, we're setting it at forty percent. It's always, it's always there. We've had major challenges. We wanted to increase it, but we realized it was not smart to do so because it was too high. Uh, in terms of the smart, we must set targets that are realistic, but not they must not be easy to achieve. So we always guard against uh, that. But this is an important function because this is the function where you are saving jobs of people who are facing dismissals especially in particular um, on section 189A. So we've, we, t we still take pride in this one because you know, from the triple crisis and issues of poverty, um, job saving is important because if you lose one job, it contributes to poverty. So we, we're still keeping that target. It's a very important one. Um, and also you will also note on the reduction of the potential industrial action. Um, we still keep that target because this is an important one when it comes to strikes, both protected and unprotected. This is an inward looking target, which talks about, and also a compliance one because it talks about strategy management and government. Um, so there isn't much to say. This is, this is about exactly what we're doing now, the presentation of the strategy is part of this program and the monitoring and ensuring that it is achieved is part of that program uh, or target. So this one, we're, we're, we're quite comfortable. And it also comes with the management of the risk. And members will see that risk is also included as, as an add on to the presentation, particularly the strategic risk, because strategic risk is important in that uh, you must make sure that everything that threatens the execution of the strategy is, is monitored and where possible it is eliminated. Uh, that's what we, we are trying to do. We've set a target on that. You can see we've set a target of 100%. So you must, we must try to prevent anything that could disrupt uh, the performance. That's exactly what I was talking about now, Chairperson. I will not take you through the strategic risk. Um, uh, with your with your chairperson permitting um, but the full presentation is there the rates are the ones that we need because risk i have not occurred it's the risk we see and therefore we need to act uh, quickly to make sure that it does not happen um, and we are presenting it here just to alert that we are aware uh, on the issues that we see from our strategic risk register and we're gonna act accordingly to make sure that they don't happen. And then Chair, that was part A, uh, the presentation that was dealing with uh, the, the APP. And the second part is the resource allocation, basically it's the budget. Just one important slide, Chairperson. Oh, I lost me again, yeah, here. Um, this is, if you look at the approved budget line, um, the total budget you see, it, it starts at the, on the left hand side on the programs I was talking to now. You will see the link from the programs in the APP and programs in the budget. And we said we've got five programs. Yes, those are the five programs. And when you set those programs in the APP, you must cater for them in the budget. And we are catering for those here. Uh, you will see from the top, 228, 16, 17, 761, 38, which goes to a billion rand and 62 million. 
And you'll see the biggest allocation is on the efficient and quality dispute resolution and enforcement services. This is a very important part because this is where your cases are sitting. And with the cases comes the enforcement of the outcomes of those cases. So we have resourced and allocated the biggest part of that um, in this program because we, we have to execute that. So that comes to a billion and 62. And you'll see also in the estimates, we're estimating that the same, the same, almost the same figure with depending on certain things. Um, Lanaga is just a, a breakdown that a person um, in, in terms of revenue. And uh, this is just a very practical uh, contribution and breakdown. Uh, of the one of a billion rand that we are talking about. Um, so I'm not gonna take you through that. On the, we, know, we can see the total revenue and the total expenses that are expected. So they balance out uh, on your left-hand side. Total revenue, a, a billion rand from the, from the approved budget and the expenses are expected to be exactly the same. That's what is expected. Although sometimes we end up with a surplus. Uh, um, yeah, that's that's the presentation. Uh, I hope I was very brief, and I did not give you and and kill you with detail. I hope that the the key aspect I have presented in a manner that clarified, and also the reason for that approach. I know that you are aware of what we do and what we did in the previous APP as it ends this month. This is a continuation of that five year strategy. And we have attempted our best to navigate the challenges that we have gone through. And we are happy that there isn't too much damage since COVID, but there are remnants of COVID that are there. We have tried to cater for our proactive and reactive action on matters that arise where we need to intervene. Um, you know, the strategic interventions, and also where we need to act proactively, like our pre bargainings And we've enhanced our, our segments in the organizations and we've catered for that. And we're hoping that with everything taken into account, we should be in a position to achieve these targets and still have the high impact that I believe we always do. Sometimes we get it wrong, Jefferson, and we do get it wrong sometimes. We make mistakes individually, we make mistakes as an organization. But we, we recover from that and remember that we have to service uh, the users because those are the important stakeholders or the most important people why we exist. So the organization in terms of this 23-24, I can on behalf of the CCMA submit that this APP 23-24 be, be accepted and approved by the portfolio committee and that we will to, to the best of our ability be able to to deliver on it. Um, thank you very much, Chairperson. That will be the end of of my presentations. If there are any questions, uh, myself and the team are present to try our best to respond to your questions. Um, thank you very much. No, thank you very much, Executive uh, uh, Director, CCMA. Uh, I just want to check with members. Uh, do you want to receive? Gail also, and then ask questions, or we ask questions and dispense with CCMA, hoping that uh, come again. Suppose it's some Dabe, Chair. Honorable Dabe. Uh, thank you, Chair. Good morning to you and the honorable members, the deputy minister, and uh, the, the department present in our uh, secretariat. Chair, I think it would be proper that uh, we get the two presentation mm -hmm. and uh, then discuss due to time factor. And uh, we have to, those of us who are attending physically would have uh, transport constraints if we go beyond uh, uh, half past 12. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Honorable. I saw Ms. Honorable Bigram's hand. Yes, thank you. I, I do agree. I often don't agree, okay. but I do that we hear both presentations first. Thanks. Okay. Thank you.
Mr. Poshoff, are you, Miss, I'm sorry, are you connected now? Chairperson, uh, yes, thank you very much. And I apologize for the chaos that reigned. My system for some reason just crashed. And I could hear, but I could do nothing. It was, a, it was really a bad experience for me. I'm going to ask that Matapelu just if uh, the executive director just thank you. That Matapelu just uh, loads the presentation. And just so that you can see, I'm really here. I started the video, but I'll take it off when I start. Chairperson, with your uh, approval, I'm going to do the presentation for the department, then ask the CFO to do the presentation on the MTEF and also give the, the CEO of SE an opportunity to do his presentation so that we uh, all take a bite at the presentation this morning. The presentation, as was with the CCMA, was circulated, so I would like to move directly to the, to the um, presentation of, the, of the, the contents of the presentation. The first part, up to the mission, vision values, is for background information, so I'm not going to dwell on that, especially that I heard that some members are challenged for time. I will briefly look at the medium-term strategic indicators and then from there take the presentation in more detail. So the first slide that I would like to look at would be slide seven, which talks about the government service delivery priorities and the Dell implementing entities. And here we can see that the department supports six of the seven strategic priorities of government. The only one that we are not supporting is priority number five but all the others we are supporting in a lesser or a more extensive manner. Then I'm not going to look at the uh, MTEF deliverables because it's part of our strategic plan and we have had quite some time had the same strategic plan with small changes here and there. The next slide that I would like to look at is slide 16, which talks to the oversight that was done over this uh, APP. And um, here the members will see that National Treasury, the Department of Planning, Monitoring and Evaluation, our own internal audit unit, as well as the Auditor General of South Africa had a look and signed off on our APP for, for the year going. On the next slide, slide 17, the annual performance plan, I'm going to look at the four programs for the department, administration, Inspection Enforcement Services, Public Employment Services, Labor Policy and Industrial Relations. Now, firstly is Administration Program 1, and the allocation that they have received is um, 1,075,982,000. And as I said earlier, the CFO will talk to this in more detail. So what are the indicators? Firstly, if we, thank you. Firstly, that we will have a vacancy rate of 7% or less per quarter. Members will recall that we had an extensive discussion on this the week before last. The second one would be that in this year, 49% of our senior management service positions will be occupied by women. 25% of our positions will be occupied by young people. And 3% of our positions will be occupied by people with disabilities or persons with disabilities. We also, members will recall, have had some audit findings on our information security, and this has been included in the APP for this year, the improvement of our information security status, and to have 100% implementation of the first phase of the improvement of our uh, information security. Then uh, there's a number of new, new indicators here. The first one would be also our legacy systems, Members are aware of the, the uh, project that we're running at the moment to modernize and update our systems. So uh, in this year, we will finalize the labor policy industrial relations system on our integrated ICT platform. We will also ensure the functionality of our ethics structures and the ad adequate capacity for this year. There's an ethics management plan which has been compiled and it will be rolled out during the course of this year. 
Our fraud and corruption cases, 75% of them will be finalized within six months of receipt. Uh, and the others will be finalized within 12 months. Some cases are very complicated and we need extra uh, external assistance for that. That is why we, uh, 75%. The percentage of consequent management cases related to corruption cases will be finalized through investigations. 80% of those will be done during the course of this year. On the next slide, our business continuity plan will be developed and finalized during the course of this year. Uh, this is also a new indicator on the APP. Then we will look at the annual financial statements, the interim statements, they have to be submitted as per the timeframes as dictated by the PFMA. Our irregular and unauthorized expenditure cases will be reported, 100% of those. And then the re reporting of fruitless wasteful expenditure would also be 100% of those that will be reported to the accounting officer. That takes care of the administration APP. If we move then to inspection enforcement services, who have received 650 and a half million rands for the work that they have to do. As with last year, um, here, are the, here are the indicators that they have. It's four indicators. Firstly, 298,332 workplaces will be, will be inspected by the inspectors during the course of this year. 95% of these will be served those that are non-compliant, let me qualify. Those who are non-compliant will be served with notices in terms of the relevant law uh, within 14 days of the inspection, that will be 95% of these employers. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then the percentage of non-compliant workplaces that will be settled out of court or the CCMA or referred for prosecution will be 30 working days. So of the, uh, within 30 working days will be 65%. So of 1.2, those employers who are then still non-compliant after they have received the documents, 65% of those will be dealt with in terms of 1.3. And then the number of, number of formal advocacy sessions that will be conducted to raise awareness, there will be four seminars and two conferences that will be held during the run of this APP. Public employment services receive just over a billion and 20 million rands to do their work. And here we aim to register at least 900,000 work seekers on the ESA system and register 110,000 job opportunities in this year. Uh, of the work, registered work seekers, so of the 900,000, the minimum that we will provide employment counseling with will be 250,000 to prepare the work seekers for the world of work. The opportunities that we aim to fill by registered work seekers will be 60,000. And then we will enter into a number of partnerships, uh, which will be 24 to further assist the public employment services in delivering on their mandate. As the members are aware, we're busy with the national employment policy and this will be developed and submitted by the end of this financial year for implementation in the next year. Labor policy, industrial relations here, uh, they were allocated 1.344 billion Rand and the bulk of this allocation as members have heard earlier goes to the CCMA. And a, let, a smaller number goes to the NETLAC, which the CFO will talk about a little bit later. So our annual report of the employment equity report and the public register will be published by June. And uh, the register will be de developed, the annual one will be developed by 31 March. The national minimum wage will be reviewed by 31 March of next year. Next slide, please. So the collective agreements that we receive uh, will be verified and assessed within 120 days, all of those that we receive. And the percentage of collective agreements verified with it will be 60 days within receipt of the annum. 100% of those will be done. And then 100% of labor organizations <clears throat> application for registration will be approved or refused within 
60, uh, sorry, 90 working days. Uh, then there is a number of uh, research reports and labor market trend reports, which we will publish uh, by the year, as is indicated on the slide here. I would like to move to the next slide, which is the provincial breakdown of the IES and PEST targets to give members a sense of what will be delivered in each province on these two programs of the department. If we move to the next slide. These targets uh, were compiled or set in uh, after discussions with uh, consultations with the CDPOs as well as looking at the resources available in each and every province. So here members can see that the bulk of the inspections will be delivered by KZN province, 63,720, followed by uh, GP, 60,708, followed by Western Cape with 32,700 roughly, and Eastern Cape, just over 32,000. And then from there, it goes down to the smaller provinces in terms of the numbers of inspections. In total, 298.332, as I said earlier. On the next slide uh, is a breakdown of the number of inspections per legislation. And I'm not going to go through this in detail, but it gives a sense of where the bulk of the work will be done. On slide 30, we're looking at the registration of work seekers. Again, here, uh, the provinces are represented with the bulk of the work being done again in KZN. Oh, sorry, sorry, in, in Gauteng, and then followed by KZN, followed by Western Cape, Eastern Cape, and from there, there downwards, coming to the total of 900,000, as I alluded to earlier. On the next slide, we're looking at the job opportunities registered, and this is in keeping with the provinces as we have seen them with Gauteng, the, the biggest number, followed by KZN and Eastern Cape. Counseling is exactly the same in terms of, of the work expected by the provinces, uh, so that we can make sure that, no, can we just go back one slide, please? Thank you. So that we make sure that our work seekers are prepared for the world of work. It starts with GP followed by Eastern Cape Guys in Aden, who has got the same target. Again, target set based on the resources that we have on the ground. Opportunities filled, which is the next slide 33. Here you can see members that the bulk of the work is expected by GP, followed by KZN and Eastern Cape in terms of the placement of work seekers. And from there it goes to Western Cape. The partnership agreements that we would want to enter into uh, is mostly either three or two per province, so that it comes to the total of 24 for the year. Chippers and I have also thought it good to look at the uh, service delivery indicators for, for the department for this year coming. This slide reflects how many labor centers, satellite offices, Tusong service centers and visiting points the department has where we deliver services to our clients. And then on the next slide is our commitment to service in terms of more detail, what we are going to do and when we will do additional service delivery matters. And here we're looking for, for example, at the provision of tools of trade, the invoices that will be paid, the procurement of goods and services that will be done from women owned businesses. Uh, and then on the slide, the next slide thereafter is IES, which talks about the resolution of labor-related complaints, how many will be done, 90%, and uh, within 30 calendar days, and the rest within 60. Uh, the incidents in terms of the OHS Act will be finalized 85% within 19 cal 90 calendar days, and so on. I, I think I will not go into all the detail that we have in terms of the service delivery indicators. If we can move perhaps to the slide 42. On slide 42, we have the transversal service delivery standards, uh, which talks about complaints, which should be acknowledged within 24 hours. And 95% of those should be acknowledged within 24 hours and the remainder within 36 hours of receipt. And we will aim to resolve 95% of all complaints 
with complete information within seven calendar days and the remaining 5% within 14. And then queue management is important. We are working very hard to deal with the queues at the labor centers at the moment, but continue to prioritize uh, persons with disabilities, the elderly and expecting mothers to, to the front of the queue, and also to do screening of the client's needs and to direct them to the correct service area when they come. Chairperson, then I'm looking at the strategic risks and I'm not going to spend time on the mitigating strategies because it was provided. If we move to slide 44, please, Matapelo. Thank you. One of our biggest challenges is the delays in the modernization of our ICT service to meet the required standards. And linked to that is the availability of our systems or the last scale interruptions of our digitally enabled services. And also then information physical security breaches as uh, members are aware that this happens or there are attempts at all organizations to, to breach the cybersecurity. Then in terms of administration, also the structural deficiencies, the, in terms of the support services, I members will recall that when we had the meeting on the vacancy rate, that this was a matter that was discussed. A strategic risk to us is the increase in the vacancy rate instead of us const, const, constantly decreasing it. And then delays in the disciplinary processes or consequential management, which is also a strategic risk. Many, or the bulk of our strategic risks sit in administration, as members will see. So another risk is the exposure of the department to litigation, our third parties who are not providing services. And here we're looking at electricity, we're looking at office accommodation, the water crisis that we find in municipalities, cabling where we're dependent on CETA and, and Telcom and so forth. And then the failure of the department to spend its allocated funds uh, for the work that we have to do. The uh, last risks for administration is of course, the non-submission of our statements and the failure to detect irregular and wasteful uh, expenditure. Then we look at the strategic risks for IES. On the next slide, here is the non-compliance by employers and users with labor legislations. It's a, it's, a, it's a substantial risk. And the second risk for IES is the unreliable IES performance information. Members will recall that we've had a history of audit findings which have now been addressed but it's something that could happen again. So it's one of the risks identified by the program. In terms of public employment services, the strategic risks here are the insufficient placement of registered work seekers. This is a big concern to us and, and a, a big risk to the program. And then the last strategic risk is that of our inability to extend collective agreements to non-parties within the timeframes that we set and in the way that we said we would do it. Chairperson, that takes care of the presentation of the um, APP in terms of our targets and indicators. With your approval, I'll ask the CFO to do the financial report of the, the MTF allocations now, followed by SEE. Thank you, Chair. Okay. <clears throat> CFO, you may proceed. Uh, good uh, morning, honorable chair, honorable members. We would like to see your face forward. Thank you. Uh, I'm gonna take the, the committee to our MTF allocations. Uh, the format of the slide is uh, I, I look, I've started with the current year 2223, which will give us a base amount and the allocation for the APP that we are presenting, which is 2324, and also the indicative uh, allocations for the outer years. And in the slide that we have, uh, it shows the, uh, the total allocation 
is for it's just about 4 billion 4.092 which overall shows a slight decrease from the base year of 4.107 and if you look at the the, 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 the branches administration uh, have been in a way forced to decrease well, the, the, there's a decrease in terms of the allocation from the base of 1.1 to 1.075 which i think mainly is look they look in the main is on the compensation of employees of the administration which i think is in line with the government thinking that there is uh, the administration has to give way for for, for 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 the core functions as you can see in the look in these allocations ie uh, look ies their allocation is 650 which is an increase from 614 from the uh, from the from, from the current from the base public employment services so one uh, one billion and 14 uh, the base and the 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 the, 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 the app allocation is uh, uh, one billion and twenty and uh, lp and ir is one point three seven seven with a slight decrease of one three one 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 billion three uh, hundred and forty four uh, and for twenty four twenty five the allocation further decreases to 3.9, fall below the 4 billion mark to 3.9, and it then take a slight increase in 20, 25, 25, 26, which is the, 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 the outer year. Next slide. This is the same information, but in terms of the economic classification, uh, current uh, payments is the base is 2.2, where I've indicated where the increase the de de decrease is, is going to be on the compensation of employees, and the APP uh, the 2324, the amount is 2.129. And the allocations for the outer years as well. Transfers and subsidies, they are showing an increase, not a decrease. The base is one point, it was 1.8 billion, and the, 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 the 2324 is 8.53 uh, billion, which shows an increase. And uh, that increase continues in, even in the outer years as well. Payment for capital assets, also the base year is 99 million. Uh, and the, 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 the 2324 is 109, with also projects and increase throughout, giving us the total, allo uh, total allocation for 2324 being a 4 billion and 92 increase from the uh, decrease from the base of 4.107 billion. Next slide. Uh, compensation of employees, I think is now delved look deeper in showing the way the decrease is on compensation of employees. Currently we've got a budget of 465 million and for 23-24, the budget decreases to 461, which we then have to uh, work on in the year. I look, look in the in the look in the 23-24. Goods and services. Also, there is a, a slight decrease from the base of 558 million, 558 million to 529 million. Transfers and subsidies, there is also a decrease, uh, uh, a huge decrease there. Currently, we've got 2.289, 2 well, 2 just about 222 uh, to 1023. I think we do have, look, I look, I look, I look, I do have, uh, when, I, when, when, I, uh, when I get into it, we'll have to uh, in, indicate what has contributed to such a, a look a huge decrease on transfers and subsidies 
payment for capital assets, 74 uh, million uh, as a base for 23-24 is 83.5 million. And it also shows a, an upward uh, project going forward. The total amount uh, is, uh, for current payments is just about 1.1 billion, which is the base, and it decreases to 1075, but then it starts increasing slightly. Next slide. Uh, compensation of employees. Uh, score, uh, the base is 498, which then uh, increases to 533, going well, also showing also an increase in the outer year. Goods and services, uh, it should also shows the same. Transfers and subsidies, uh, 862, uh, showing a decrease of 85. Payment for capital assets, 18.9 uh, million, and for 23-24, uh, it's 19.7 uh, million, and also as an upward uh, project, giving a total of 614.8 as a base, which uh, for 23-24, 650 million, uh, then also shows for the outliers an upward uh, movement. Also, for public employment services, uh, compensation of employees, 338.9 as a base, and also a look at decrease there for public employment services of 307.8, but also then shows an upward, uh, on the outer years, shows an upward, uh, an upward trend. Goods and services, uh, 41.2 million uh, with a decrease in the 23-24 of 40.8 uh, million, but then on the outer years showing an increase again. Transfers and subsidies, 629 uh, million for 23-24, showing an increase of, of 666.1 million and a decrease in the outer years as well, look, look as well of, three, of 316 uh, point, uh, point one. Then it, it then increases, it then stabilizes and shows an upward uh, movement again. Payment for capital assets is five uh, five point two million, with an increase straight through even on 23-24 of 5.9. Uh, million and it shows that on the outer years indicates an increase. The total amount then for public employment services is just about 1.014 uh, billion. And in total for the 23-24, uh, an increase of 1.020 uh, billion and a decrease in the outer years. Next slide. LP and IR, the total allocation in terms of the look, the current base is 1.377. With uh, for the 23-24, uh, it's a uh, 1.344 with a decrease, uh, then an increase for the out highest. Compensation of employees, a slight, de uh, a slight decrease from 112 million to 108. Uh, goods and services, a decrease, 94 uh, million to 50 million. Transfers and sub subsidies, 1, point, uh, 1, b uh, 1 billion and 69 to 185, uh, an increase in the 23, 24 and an upward trajectory uh, for the outer years. 
payment uh, for capital assets, uh, 1.1 million with a decrease of 579 million and an upward uh, project from there on. So for LPNIR, the total allocation is uh, 1.7, 1.344 1, uh, for 23-24, uh, which shows a slight decrease from the base. Uh, the allocations for provinces as well has been included, indicating uh, the base amount for the current oil well, for, for 23, look, 20, 22, 23, and the allocation for each province on the 23, 24, with a total amount of uh, 1.75 1 billion, an increase. Uh, that means the provinces are not taking the increase. Uh, the decrease in, in some of the line items of the budget. They are shows an increase from 1.55 billion to 1.75 and in, indicating a, an increase from the local uh, on the outer years. Uh, also what I needed also to amplify is the the reason for the, 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 the more especially on the transfers and sign look and look uh, transfers uh, look to our entities. On program three, they have a GTEC, which also, yeah, which, which will end, which will end in the 2024 and not continue. It contribute, it could look, it contributes to to the decrease of our budget. Productivity SA is one of the Entities in program three that has uh, look that has got an allocation supported employment ent uh, entities is, uh, is also on program three designated groups uh, also on program three which we also will have to transfer that means that program three has got a transfer look, included in the transfers is the amount of uh, six hundred and sixty six uh, million that is going to be transferred to our entities. And also in product, our entities are also in program four, which is CCMA, about uh, 1 billion, 1.05 billion, uh, NetLab, 80 million, and strengthening of civil society, 24 million, and also our transfers to ILO. Those are in amplification on our, of the transfers and subsidies that are included in our budget allocation. Thank you very much. I thank you very much. Thank you very much, CFO. Uh, honorable members, there are the presentations. Uh, can Mr. Maduna please mute? Mm -hmm. Somebody, yeah. Mr. Maduna, can you please mute? Yeah. Uh, honorable Mkonto, Honorable Bigram. For now, thank you. Over to you. I will thank you. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, thank for the opportunity. Good morning, Chair, um, honorable members, the DM, and uh, the staff from the uh, members of the staff from the department. Chair. Um, I will I will start with the with the last one. As the last presentation was talking about SEE's chair, I just remembered that we once promised um, SEE that we will meet the national uh, uh, the portfolio committee um, as a, 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 a of of the national treasurer. Sorry, honorable Mkonto. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I've made a, a mistake. Sorry, members. We must get a a a, a presentation from from SEE. My apologies. My sincere okay. apologies. Okay. Okay. And, okay. And we will come with questions. Sorry for that. SEE. If you may lower your hand. For now. Mr. Morotoba. Uh, 
Chairperson, it will be the CEO of SAE doing the presentation, Mr. Bacardi. Oh, okay. Over to him. Thank you, thank you so much, Honorable Chair. I will, it's, a, it's rather a rather short presentation. It will be less than five minutes. If, if we may ask the Secretary to uh, flag the presentation. Thank you so much. We can just go straight to slide number three. Yeah, thank you so much. So these are annual performance plan targets are essentially on these three critical items, which include our statutory mandate of creating additional employment opportunities for persons with disability in the next financial year. And that number is 150 additional employment opportunities. We'll have to increase our revenue generation by 10%, which will enable us to absorb additional persons with disabilities as well. We also have to sign at least 10 MOUs to ensure the sustainability of our revenue generation, which will further assist us to remain a going concern. Next slide, please. Yes, these are our targets uh, per quarter. So we can see that um, um, we've actually split um, uh, um, the, the, the numbers from quarter one, 25, and you see the, the quarter three and quarter four with big numbers, because that's where we no would normally have realized our revenues, which then will justify us absorbing more persons with disabilities. As you can see, I've highlighted on our revenue generation growth of 10%. And this basically the, the, the last uh, block is the, uh, the split in terms of uh, the customer agreements that have to be signed. Next slide, please. This is just the, the way uh, SE is capitalized. Um, you will see when, we, when, I, when I do the, the, the budgeted um, uh, 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 slide, the budget slide, you, you will see that um, in terms of our salary bill, uh, most of the allocation goes to the salary bills 80%. And, and the remaining 20% really goes to the running of the operations in our factories. So, but we, we, just to, 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 to highlight members that we rely on the National Treasury Grant, which comes through the Department of Employment and Labor, which is a, a, a PES, and then the sales of goods and services and the donations or other grants, like we are involved with the Education for Employment, which is supported by the European Union. But this is basically the slide to highlight um, how SE is capitalized. Next slide, please. You'll see in the 23-24 um, uh, uh, financial year, if you look at the factory employee salaries, it's 126 million. And if you look at the administration, administration salaries, it's 64 million. So that alone and, and, and has put us into a deficit budget, as you can see, it's on a minus 110, uh, it's on a min minus, there's a, there's a deficit of 110 million. So this is basically the, where the crunch of our problem, and, and if you look at year on year, we've been operating on a deficit budget. So that, that is the, the concern in terms of um, running SE because our mandate uh, clearly defines that we have to um, create employment opportunities, but at the same time, we have to drive our sales revenue. Hence, we always cry out to say that um, we need support in terms of uh, growing our sales revenue so that we are able to augment the deficit budget as reflected on the slide. And uh, next slide, please. These are basically key, initiative, key initiatives that SE will be embarking upon. I've mentioned the education for employment because part of our mandate is to promote the employability of persons with disabilities. You see the education for employment, uh, which I've mentioned that is supported by European Union. So we are quite involved with that. And um, I must also say that uh, at least with GPWI, with Sand and, and, and MOU, with them in the next financial year, we expect to generate sales from that department. So these are the number of activities as well that SE will be embarking upon. Product Productivity SA has actually um, joined with SEE for a business turnaround initiative. So we're excited that at least um, we'll then focus on our business fundamentals to establish where we can improve because we also believe in continuous improvement. And basically those are the operational um, um, project that will be in, in, in embarking upon in the next in financially. Some of them have already started. Next slide, please. This is basically our national footprint. Uh, the only province where we, we don't have a, a factory operation is in Pumalanga. But this is just to highlight that we um, all over the country to ensure that we are closer to our customers, 
and to ensure as well that we create employment opportunities opportunities across the country. Um, so the the the, um, uh, the the plan for from Pumalanga is still on the cards. I mean, there were a number of issues which were impacted by the COVID nineteen. So and 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 in terms of uh, the the revenue allocation as well. So those were the challenges, but um, it's not off the cards. Um, but at the moment, we, we we're still focusing on just generating uh, revenue so that um, we can then after focus on our, on our expansion. Next slide. This are uh, basically the, uh, the highlighted risks, which uh, and and then the the mitigation strategies based on the risks highlighted. We felt very strong that we need to improve on our marketing, and develop new pro product initiatives. And then, like I said, in order to, for us to remain a going concern, we need to secure at least ten new customer agreements, and increase sales revenue so that we can build on our financial sustainability and liquidity to justify um, creating additional employment opportunities for persons with disabilities. I think that, was the la that is the last slide. Um, and if you can move, that is, thank you so much, Chair. We will then um, uh, go straight to questions. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Then in the order, uh, it was Honorable Mkondo. I hope she is still, I hope she has been, oh, Honorable Mkondo is still, so, I will, I will uh, allow you, Honorable Kondo, uh, to ask your questions. Then after that, it will be Honorable Gray Graham for now. Thank you, Honorable Kondo. Okay, Chair, thanks. <laughs> thanks very much. Um, I have already greeted everyone, Chair. Now I will say all protocol observed. Uh, uh, Chair, um, <laughs> it's good that I reminded you about SEE. Uh, Chair, we thank you the, very much. During our oversight uh, visit in the Eastern Cape, um, we 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 learned and established that the 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 purpose of the SEEs, the purpose of existence of the SEEs, SEEs is mainly dependent uh, on them having. Um, a, mem a, a memorandum of understanding and government uh, entities uh, supporting supporting them in terms of the 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 products that they they produce, and we promised the chair that we will meet with the portfolio committee attached to the national treasure. I I I don't understand. I don't remember us doing that and if um, is wh what I'm saying now is, is still a, a, a dead chair, I would just remember, remind your office chair that we, 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 we try to meet um, that portfolio committee so that we are able to assist the, the SEE, the SEEs. And chair, um, uh, if, uh, ESEE can give us now maybe a date or a year. When when are they going to establish an SEE in, in Pumalang? They've been promising for quite a long time. Um, they see the gap. There are, there, there are a lot of um, persons living with disability in, in, in Pumalang, like uh, in, in all the other provinces. But we just requesting, Chair, that now uh, the the issue of the SEE in Pumalanga should be taken um, uh, very seriously. Okay. Um, I will then go to the CCMA. Um, the according to their presentation, chair, they are anticipating an increase in, in cases. Um, then my question is. Uh, in terms of other resources, either than financial, maybe a human resource, uh, 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 are they are they are they ready for this anticipated uh, increase? And chair, there is something that I have um, realized as uh, taking um, a, a complaints from uh, people. I want to check with CCMA, it's a general question. Do they refer 
if a person comes to the CCMA by mistake, are they able to refer those people back to the department if the case of that person has to be attended to by the department, maybe the, 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 the inspection and, and enforcement? I'm just uh, making a, an example. Um, with the department chair, I want to know if they are able to connect uh, the, the, the PES registered job seekers with public entities, like when departments are, um, are, 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 look, are, are, are having vacant uh, po positions or intents or whatever, are they able, because I'm looking at the number of the, the job seekers that they have registered and the number of the job seekers that they were able to place is, is very low. The percentage is, is very low, uh, Chair. And then I want to check from the, the CFO if uh, the, 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 the budget allocated for administration, specifically the compensation of employees, has it taken into consideration the fact that now the department is in a mission to fill all the, 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 the vacant uh, positions. Thanks very much, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Baker. Thank you, Chair, and thank you very much for the presentations. Uh, a couple of things. First of all, for the CSO, I have each entity, I have a few questions. Um, and just following up on the previous question, the budget is tight. There are going to be many more claims, we know, uh, as the year gets on. Um, I suspect the claims will probably increase by 20% uh, looking at the, the finances of the country. Maybe there might be an idea of appointing a business manager to raise monies from seminars, training, etc. from the CSO. Um, they do this already, but I think it's very low-key and they could probably raise a lot of money. I know the business community would love to have more training from the CSO. So that's the first one. We're not even in the strike season yet, but it's but it's hectic. Uh, it is really bad at the moment, and we're not reached the strike. Strike season is normally June, July. Um, can't the commissioner look at possibly pursuing more of that invoking of the compulsory arbitration in terms of the uh, Labor Relations Act? Um, I'd also like to know how many independent contractors the CSO has on their books and what percentage of their budget is that. Um, just having a look quickly at the premises of this of the CCMA around the country, um, they seem very run down. Uh, the landlords, uh, for, for instance, in Cape Town, Johannesburg and Durban, the landlords somehow think they've got a very nice long lease and then they do nothing. And I would ask the CSA to put pressure on the landlords to fix up the premises. The helpline that the CSA has, it's dropping a lot. Uh, we often don't have it answered. Um, largely, we just don't get a response. So the helpline used to be brilliant, need more of it. Then I know that the presidency in the, in the SONA um, made a whole lot of um, promises and um, ideas that came out of the SONA about deregulation, etc. cetera. Um, has the CCMA been approached for input on the deregulation um, and what's happened over there? Um, in terms of Section 189, I know the CCMA hands over figures with regard to Section 189A, but we should be keeping figures of 189, not the A, but just also 189 itself. And then we can actually determine how many people are losing their jobs in the country. Um, as you know, the unemployment is probably the worst in the world at the moment. Just to, over to the department, um, somehow the ministry was completely absent in the first three days of the Nahawu strike. What happened? Um, also, I, I look at the department itself and uh, in terms of their... Or what 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 they're supposed to be doing uh, isn't one of their objectives is labor peace and somehow it doesn't it does, seems absent the minister himself was going to report back on the uh, uif investments 
uh, into an unknown company. They were doing a research into this. They were going to report back um, how far are we on that. And then also there were previous investments about three years ago, uh, which we still haven't found out what happened. They were going to do a report back three years ago. I need to applaud the department for 3% employment with people with disabilities. Well done. Put pressure on other government departments for that as well. I think that's one of the duties of the Department of Employment and Labor to pressurize other departments to employ this disability. Um, the, um, the strike itself caused closures of many of the branches of the Department of Labor. What's the report back on that? Are all the branches up and running and there's no problem uh, with that. Um, and I want to quickly Hello, look at it. SE. Yeah, the SEE is doing a job. I don't know how successful it is. I have my doubts, but isn't there? Isn't, wouldn't it be more successful for the SEE to help um, disability, the disability sector, who all have assisted factories and workshops attached to them? Those workshops are closing because they can't afford to keep going. Uh, they're struggling to survive. And especially with regard to the minimum wage, can SEE possibly use their influence to try and get involved with the disability sector and all their supported enterprises there? Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Honorable uh, Monsari. Thank, thank you, Honorable Chair. Good morning. Good morning to Honorable Members and the uh, <coughs> Honorable Deputy Minister and the uh, the officials led by the COO and the our guests. Uh, Chair, let me appreciate first all the presentations that have been made. My questions are more specifically to the SEE. So the first one it relates to the submission of presentations that they have made that uh, almost 80% of their income uh, goes to cost of employees, which means uh, they are left with 20% to do uh, that is everything else as an entity. The question I wanted to, to check with them is, uh, how much of that 80% comes from their own revenue and how much comes from uh, the subsidy that comes from the Employment and Labor Department? That's the first one. Then on the second one is with regard to the inability to make the desired impact so that it gets uh, the necessary funding through uh, selling to departments or to other other department other government departments. I'm checking to what extent is the entity having an open day if it has had any open day where it is able to promote its its products, and if if they have had what success have these uh, open days uh, done, particularly in impacting on the desirability of their products uh, to the intended uh, targets, particularly government departments. And the, if perhaps they can just relate to us, the, the last of these, if they have had any. The, the final point today is around the question of, of learnership. Which, which, which could uh, in part also link up to what Honorable Bigram has raised. Uh, the extent to which uh, the SDE is uh, able to attract or to have uh, or to give out uh, leadership to the uh, <clears throat> disability community, uh, where uh, they can assist in promoting uh, acquiring of skills, uh, relevant experience, but more so uh, skills that are related to their own uh, sector of operation and the areas where they are currently engaging in terms of, of products. I'm raising all this relative to the 
extent to which uh, the SEA are unable to, 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 to make the desired impact in terms of raising own revenue and also expanding in such a manner that they are able therefore to meet uh, their uh, desired targets. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you, uh, Thank you, Chair, and uh, thanks for the presentations. Uh, we highly appreciate them. Uh, the first question is on uh, STEM. It's a question of clarity. On slide uh, 24, um, uh, output indicator 2.1.1.1 1 .1 and 2.2.1.1. Uh, what are the causal factors for the uh, fluctuations as far as performance targets are concerned? Um, if it's environment, what is it that has caused these fluctuations in terms of having the, the target, the performance targets uh, uh, not being standard? Um, if we can be clarifying that. Um, the, the second question is on slide 32, um, the cybersecurity risk. What capability and capacity that have been built over time, if any, um, uh, to, to, to deal with the, with the challenge? Um, on Dell uh, presentation, um, the Slide 22, number of employment work, work opportunities registered on the employment service. It's uh, 110,000. What informs the, the, the target and how do they arrive at uh, 110,000? Take into account the role of Dell in relation to uh, Employment Services Act that relates to among its purpose is to improve employment prospect of work seekers, in particular the vulnerable work. I'm failing to correlate with the, the target set in relation to the Employment Services Act. If they could maybe clarify. The last one, Chair, it's on the issue of the uh, the government wage subsidy. What is the role of Dell uh, as far as that uh, wage, the government wage subsidy concerned? Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you. Thank you, honorable uh, members. For me, is uh, I think I've, I've, I've been covered in other questions, but there's one, there's one area which is quite concerning for me, which was said by, the, by Dell the delay on consequence, consequence management. For how long are we going to be getting this? Uh, I don't want to say an excuse, DM. How long are we going to always be? We've never been presented by presented uh, by the Department of Employment and Labor on, on, on issues that have been sent to them. Uh, for uh, to address for consequence management. I do understand there will be those that are under SIU, I'm making an example, but there are internal ones. What's the problem? We are, we are wrapping up the term now, but we have always been. Why is it? Why? I think, I think we, we, we need that explanation. It can't be. It can't be forever. It that means this is the this is the this is the song. I don't want to be to say you are just a, but just taken for what, for granted. I'm honest about it. It's quite disturbing. We know from from even before tears, even the, the those that are the junior staff in UIF, it was only at the time when the commissioner and the outcome, he came back and what is happening? 
to the others. No wonder public servants are just doing it as they wish, because they know that they, it's just a just a a a, a song of expense that there will be consequence management, and they know that nothing is then going to happen after that. I'm 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 raising it sharply, without any fear of 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 contradiction. What is a problem? Can we be told? Is it capacity? Is it just it's just a leadership thing that uh, no, they they are just given a a, a a a a white handkerchief brush on the face? No, no, it's it's, it's completely unacceptable this time around. We will then request the uh, you will you will uh, respond whoever is going to start is fine. And the DM will come last. And the DM will come last. Chairperson, thank you. Uh, like any good conductor, I'm going to give work to the other members of the orchestra. Um, all the questions on SEE will be dealt with by the CEO of SEE. I'm sure the um, National Director of CCMA will take all his questions. The CFO will take the finance-related questions. I would also want uh, Mr. Muratoba to, apart from answering or responding to the question that was asked uh, regarding the target for, for public employment services, deal with the assistance of uh, the department to the disability sector, the question asked by Mr. Bagram. Then I would also want to ask the DDG corporate services to deal with the consequence management. I will take the question on the strike action and perhaps I must start there seeing that it's uh, the question that I can respond to. Uh, indeed, the strike is having a serious impact on some of our operations, not in all provinces. I think the provinces that are the worst affected at the moment is Eastern Cape and Pumalanga, where there's a very high level of intimidation of our staff. The department has taken the position that we open for business until such time that the manager on the ground is of the view that the lives of our clients and the lives of our officials are endangered by the strike action. And then uh, the South African police service is called for assistance. So indeed, there are offices that are closed. There are offices that are open early in the morning, closed, and then open again late in the afternoon. But those two provinces specifically has had a massive impact. The strike has had a massive impact on these services. We are dealing with the situation. We have meeting senior council later today to deal with the situation by way of the courts. Uh, Chairperson, then I'm going to ask, let's start with the SEE CEO, followed by, Mr. by the CFO, Mr. Moratoba and DDG Corporate Services, and the bulk of the questions are for the CCMA will ask the National Director then lastly to, to deal with the questions. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you so much, Chair. Um, and, and I must say thank you so much to Honorable Mkonto for pointing out that there is a need to involve Treasury to alleviate the challenges that SE faces around a high degree of apathy when it comes to other government departments signing MOUs with SEE. And I must say that we'll gladly welcome that intervention. On the expansion to Mpumalanga, I must say, again, they would need um, treasury intervention, um, as well as maybe provincial stakeholders in the province of Mpumalanga, perhaps the office of the premier and, and, and various stakeholders to assist us in making sure that our expansion is possible around there. And I must say that um, Honorable Begram also mentioned the budget constraints that the country is facing. And um, when he was making some comments on the CCA, on the CCMA, indeed, there are budget constraints. Hence, we are appealing to various stakeholders to assist us in terms of our expansion. But uh, Honorable Begram also um, mentioned um, uh, how SCE can intervene in terms of the entire disability sector. I must say that we do absorb uh, from the workshops, uh, apart from uh, absorbing the uh, youth with disabilities from special schools, um, another source is indeed um, those workshops. Um, you know, we, if there are opportunities, we do absorb from them just to make sure that there's continuity. 
And uh, on the questions that were asked by Honorable Tsele in terms of um, the 80% um, that goes to cost of employees and uh, 20%. And I will just give an example about the, the, the current year. Um, our budgeted sales target is 87 million. We're currently sitting on, on, on 40, just over 40 million, which means the shortfall is around um, um, uh, 40, 47 million. So I could safely say at least um, just over, just over 50% uh, in terms of the shortfall. So there is a contribution in terms of sales, but it's not nearly enough to address the, the budget deficit. Um, and then in, in terms of our inability to make a desired impact, um, I must say that um, we open days is basically our, our strategy to, to present our products and so forth. The last one we had, was uh, in Newcastle, we actually joined our minister there when he carried out his constituency visit in the province of KZN. We had an opportunity to, to display our product and to interact, our products and to interact with a number of stakeholders. And I think on the 29th of March uh, this month, we'll have an opportunity to present um, uh, our products in the event that is sponsored by the Intelligence Transfer Center. So there are a number of interventions in terms of ensuring that our products are, are out there in the marketplace and to ensure that there is visibility. And in terms of um, attracting learnerships, you know, uh, I think part of the, the intervention is, is the employment, so this education for employment project that I've mentioned earlier on, which is funded by the European Union. It, it really has actually helped us to to, to interface with the Department of Basic Education, where they, we, we're trying to look at the pathway from education for, for persons with disabilities, uh, the transition from there to training, as well as to employment, um, and depending on the degree of disability, um, guided by the, 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 um, the health professionals, we can then make a determination which, one, uh, which, are, which of those can be absorbed into our um, SEEs or which ones can be able to work in the open labor market. So it's, it's the process that we have embarked upon um, in, 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 I mean, with, uh, in partnership with the Department of Basic Education and the entire Department of Labor the, uh, and, and, and the PES. So there are interventions and I think I've covered pretty much all the questions, but if there are any follow-up questions, we'll then address them. Thank you so much. Chair, is the CFO? I yes. am. I am responding to the question on the administration compensation of employees, taking into account the vacant positions. I will start by indicating that it's a legislative requirement that the positions in our structure remain funded. So we can have a position in our structure which is unfunded. That will be direct unauthorized expenditure. And this part is heavily guarded by the CFO to make sure that uh, I advise accordingly. Yes, uh, it is compounded by the fact that I think in the 23-24, in the, the National Treasury has forced a saving on compensation of employees by allocating less than the base amount. However, it's then incumbent upon the department to make sure that the structure remains funded. It is, however, a delicate uh, situation to balance because as you fill in the structure, some, vacant, some positions become vacant. And also the fact that the budget on COE is exclusively appropriated. That means you cannot use it anywhere else without the approval of parliament. So you have to remain, well, the, 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 the amount budgeted for SOE, compensation of employees, must be utilized for the payment of the employees. You cannot use it for a pro for allocate outside that mandate. So the, 
The balancing act that has to happen is to make sure that we minimize the, 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 the time it takes to fill in the vacancy. Because yes, there will be maybe one or two months before the new person starts, but it should be as little time as possible. Taking into account the legislature that all positions must remain funded. So the, it is then up incumbent upon all the managers to make sure that that part is strictly managed for us to have as minimal savings on compensation of employees as possible. But the structure must remain funded at all times. Thank you. Mr. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members. I'll respond to a question by Honorable Mkonto on whether uh, we, I mean, government departments do source learners from uh, uh, the PES system. Uh, currently, Honorable Members, some departments do, others don't. Uh, departments such as health, uh, the Department of Health, uh, uh, Home Affairs and the police worked with us in the massive recruitment uh, of, of young people to be placed there. Honorable members must also remember that we have a presidential um, youth uh, uh, employment initiative that is on the MOBI cell that we are also participating and that is run by Harambe, and that is where most government departments tended to recruit and place, especially teacher assistants and so on, but those were mainly short programs. There are discussions with DPSA to recognize and to make sure that they use ESA. Within our own department, there has been a decision taken that for positions levels one to eight, uh, ESSA will be used for recruitment purposes. Uh, a question by Honorable Behram around uh, Dell assistance to other disability sector. Uh, over and above the supported employment enterprises, we do have a program that is assisting various NGOs that are within the same uh, uh, activities such as um, the supported employment enterprises. Unfortunately, the budget allocated can only allow us to take a number. Currently, we have nine. Uh, we'll have them on board for the three-year period, and afterwards, uh, we will then go uh, and, 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 and um, advertise for, for others. Uh, the, the, the response has been very high, and if we could have more money allocated, I'm sure we will assist uh, similar companies. We are also working with social development. We know that there is about 540 or so companies uh, that were predominantly funded by uh, the lotteries board, uh, but because of accounting and other related issues, we are quite aware of the challenges that is facing most of them. Uh, they are closing down and they have been to our offices asking for assistance, but we can only do so uh, based on the resources that we have. Hopefully, if Treasury gives us additional allocations, we'll be able to give subsidies to uh, such uh, organizations. The question by uh, Honorable Mdabe on the total number of opportunities registered, um, how, how, what informs the target and how do we arrive at it? Honorable Mdawe, we, firstly, section 101A of the act um, talks to the whole question of registration of opportunities. The only issue that the shortcoming with that section is that it does not force companies to register all opportunities. Companies may register opportunities with the department and, and that is based on how well we, we service them. But we, we, we normally look at previous years 
uh, trends and we add a 10% or so uh, efficiency improvement. And that is why you will notice that the targets of the previous years and the outer years will differ because of that. On placement, we do the same, but you will notice that on placement, some years took a serious knock where we had to revise targets and we based that on, on the trends. And um, we, we do have a lot of young people registered but the opportunities and placement are still low. Um, our desire is to also improve that. We do conduct a lot of counseling. Uh, however, there's been a challenge around uh, realistic measures that we can put in place that the Auditor General can then follow to check as to whether our counseling uh, 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 services, for instance, contributed to the opening of a small business by, by a young person. Um, in the absence of such kind of measures, that is why we have been hesitant to put um, uh, 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 um, the, the success on the opportunities that came with the, the counseling services. Uh, thank you, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Um, the last question for us before we move to CCMA is the matter of the delay in consequence management. Uh, and I've requested that the DDG Corporate Services please respond to your question, Chairperson. Okay. DDG Corporate Services. Is she is she in? Yeah, she was in. in good morning, ma'am. Yes, I'm I'm in. I forgot to unmute myself. But good morning, honourable chairperson, and good morning to the honourable members. Um, I'm just going to switch on switch off my video. Uh, the question on the consequence management, um, honourable chairperson, I heard you loud and clear. We okay. Let me just say that we. We do have a capacity issue within ER, but it's not an excuse. I'm gonna give you the figure so that you can uh, see how well we've improved in terms of um, consequence management within the department. We, the normal cases that would delay us uh, or delay the conclusion is normally complex uh, fraud cases that we would uh, refer to the law enforcement agencies. Those are the ones that will take a bit of time, and those are normally fraud cases, complicated cases, but internal misconduct cases, for example, if we look at uh, quarter one of uh, 22, 23 of the current financial year, we received in quarter 114 misconduct cases, and out of those 114, we finalized 110. And out of the 110, out of the 114, the four remaining were fraud cases. So they are still outstanding and we're still dealing with them. And then in quarter two, we received 129 cases. And out of the 129, we finalized 95. And the remainder are also complex and they are normally fraud cases. And we've referred those to our forensic consultants to assist in investigating because we don't have that capacity within the, the department. So we've appointed a forensic consultant to assist us with the complex uh, fraud cases. And then in quarter three, we received 42 misconduct cases. 40 of them were resolved. We've got two remaining. Uh, the two that are remaining um, were canceled because I think on two or three occasions, the officials that were supposed to appear before the DC uh, committee um, called in sick. So most of the cases that we, we have in the department that are to deal with consequence man management we deal with them through the progressive discipline process that is laid out by the DPSA. Now quarter four, I cannot report because we're still counting. So we will be able to report on the quarter four cases that we, re we, we, we received um, after the end of the quarter. So the, the biggest challenge in the current financial year was the 90 day 
turnaround time. 90 days was not easy to deal with uh, cases um, within that time. But you'll find that in the fourth month, we are able to report and say all the cases that we received um, have been, majority have been resolved. Um, so that's how well we are doing. And the, the new target that has been set in the 23, 24 APP also took into account because we are not the only department that has got issues with the um, misconduct cases and um, cases that need to be handled within the ER process. And in, in, in fact, most of the departments, they come to us as a department, I think rightly so, they come to us for assistance and advice. Um, and also I think the presidency and the DPME have realized that the 90% or the, the percentage that they said in the current financial year is actually very tight. So they revised the percentage as the COO was presenting that you realize, uh, Honorable Chairperson, that the percentage has actually gone down in, in, in response to what's actually happening on the ground, but not to lower the standards, but to say that we acknowledge that these cases are not easy to resolve, majority of them to resolve within the 90 days that was um, previously set. Now, the question on the cybersecurity, um, because we also don't have, it's a highly technical and expert uh, um, area within ICT. So we had to appoint a service provider that was appointed in, at the beginning of this financial year. And we drew up a project plan. So we, we are on track in terms of cybersecurity issues. And yes, we don't have capacity internally, hence we appointed the, the service provider. I, I, I don't know whether I responded to that question um, uh, sufficiently, but I think that's what I, I had in terms of the question. And we are going ahead, hence we have the targets that we, we set on the 23-24 APP to carry through with the, with the project. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you, Ms. Masha. Thank you, Chair. I think uh, the remainder of the questions are for the CCMA. They were directed to the CCMA. So if the National Director can respond to all those questions, please, Chair. Okay, CCMA. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, thank you to uh, uh, Mrs. Bancostia on the department, uh, on the questions that they've covered. Um, let me cover our questions. Chaperson, if there's a question you didn't understand, maybe it may be asked again. We'll do our best to answer as we understand it. The first one uh, from the Honorable Mkonto on the increase of cases, uh, whether from the HR point of view, are we ready uh, on that? We, we can be as ready as we can be, Chair, uh, within the limited resources. Uh, but generally, we are ready to, to handle that, uh, just noting the constraints, but we are. Thank you on that one. Um, on the very interesting question, I must say, uh, on whether when people come by mistake to the CCM, whether we refer, refer them back where they ought to be. Yes, we do, Chairperson. Uh, members may recall that I have on several occasions um, raised this point. Um, I raised it from the point of social justice concept. Uh, we did say that uh, the ideal that we should have is have a proper tunnel, if I may use that word, that if somebody walks into our offices, they say, I have not been paid my money of the UIF, so can you please assist? We know that's a departmental issue, particularly on UIF. They ought to be there. What the worker is faced with is basically, number one, with their own limited resources to even come to town, because for some reason our offices still remain in town. Um, why? So when they come there, uh, when you redirect them, it is impolite to say, go to the Department of Employment and Labor or go to IF, we do not deal with that. There must be a way 
where we can link up either online or physically that when somebody leaves our offices, they go to the department, they know exactly who they to, they go to there and they are expected that they are coming. Because the last thing that we want is to have a worker coming there and say, go to the department, but they don't even know where the department is. So the diligence and care on our part, when I say our, I'm saying as a department as a whole, we've got to create a system which makes sure that people are not exposed to this because in between the, the interdepartmental referrals, people get discouraged. Sometimes they just give up, you know? And, and when you refer also, say go to compensation fund, we need to have more specific detail. But when you go to the compensation fund, this is where you're supposed to go. In other words, we're creating coherence between the the services that we provide. I think with DG at one point, uh, I don't know if Chaperson was a Kumbula, it was a few years ago. DG once proposed a one-stop service. In fact, it went to the extent of creating one building for headquarters of the entities and the department. I know it's not possible because we're spread in all the provinces, but there has to be a way where if there's cross referrals that we do it in a most effective, uh, cost effective way for people to go where they ought to be. There's certain minimum services that needs to be provided in the Dell family. For example, if you want to refer a case and we end up at UIF, there has to, we've done it before in our strategic plans um, and we are increasingly doing that, that someone must be able, even if they're at UIF, they must be able to refer a case at the offices of the UIF, let alone the online one. They must be able to refer that. They must be able to get a date for their cases. There must be like we established an app, you know, an application where people can, or a kiosk that is sitting in, in all of our offices. You can see the CCMA kiosk, you can see UIF and all of that, so that we do things in a way that we minimize travel and inconvenience of people who end up in wrong places. We, I'm proposing this chair because it's an appreciation that the biggest part of people we serve are unsophisticated and they have extremely limited resources, if any. So we have to go an extra mile to do that. That is why you, when you look at the Labor Relations Act in section 115, it says we must give admin support to people who come to us. It didn't say give admin support only on a dispute, right? So you look at it, in that overall, if you look at the definition of employment law in the basic conditions and you look at the minimum wage, and I think in the LRA, the meaning is consistent. It talks about, it lists legislations, URF, compensation, others are listed in the LRA. But the most important key part of that definition is that it says any other function or legislation uh, that is associated with the Minister of Labor. So. It means therefore URF, compensation, LRA, basic employment equity, all of those are services that people must get without being exposed to what I think Honorable Conto is raising about people being in the wrong places and being re-referred. I think at the heart of that complaint is that while we may refer, but we have to do it in a dignified way, in the effective way and making sure you know, there's something I call closing the deal, meaning that once you refer somebody to the department, I must be able to call on the other side. Have you received him? Have you serviced him? Is it concluded? Then the deal is done. Until that is done, a mere referral is completely insufficient. So I think that's what Honorable Conto is meaning by that question and the complaint she's getting. I'm getting the same kind of complaints because some will complain, I didn't get a service. If you look at it, it's about compensation on injuries that are that are that occur in the workplace. So I think it it it, it places this question places a lot of um, responsibility on us as Dell family uh, in terms of referrals. Um, uh, so on how we deal with it effectively until the service is done. That that caters for honourable uh, sorry Mkonto's questions. Um, uh, let me proceed to honourable. Bagger questions. The first one is there's an expectation of an increase of cases. That's correct. And it, and it predicts the 20%. Sorry, the, sorry, sorry, Iti. Okay. I just want to I just want to make a humble request. 
Most of all, that members are going to the, the, the buses are leaving. Okay. Uh, the, the, the bus at, at about past 12. Yeah. So, yeah, so that we give them time. Expedite. To... Yeah, yeah. Okay. On expedite, I see. Let me do it very quickly. On the increase on the 20, in, in, do we have a solution for that? Yes, we do. We just did an operating model for the CCMA. Included in that is income generation. So there are other associated challenges with that legislative. I think we can talk about that later. But the direct question there is, yes, we do. And then on the issues relating to our interventions, which is part of our strategy on these big disputes, whether we've used our section 150, that's what it refers to our intervention. We do that. The one that we do sparingly is the 150A that involves the complicated process and advisory awards and arbitrations. The next question was on the independent contractors. I think it has to do with the commissioners, the, 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 the part-time commissioners. The total number is 536 to 536 or 539 around there, right? And on the cost part, yes, there are costs. The, the approved cost is about 100, approved budget is about 157 million per, per annum. Per month, it's between 47 to 52 million relating to independent contractors. So that's the cost part. The next question on the pressures on landlord. Yes, we do put pressure on landlords. And in fact, I'm traveling almost all the provinces. I've been to Peter Marisberg. Now we have an East London one. There's a couple of those. If we have time, Jefferson, I would have given you more horror stories about landlords and what they are doing to us um, in as far as our building is concerned. It is quite a shame um, what we go through there. But because of time, I won't, I won't expand on that. And on the landline or contact center, um, <laughs> this is a very painful one, um, but um, yes, we do. A part of our plan before the end of the financial year is to ensure that we have a, a ensure that this issue of the contact center is resolved. We have allocated money specifically for that, so we'll get our software. We will get uh, people to do our contact. It used to be very effective. When we changed it, it caused problems, but we are reconstituting that. So we've got even an APP target. Um, as, as a component of that target, we have actually the, the issue of the landline and contact center. I do get a lot of complaints as well. The team knows about that, and that and, but we, we do have that as part of our plan and we will make sure that it is done. Uh, on the SONA, have we been approached on the, on the issue of deregulation? The normal protocol is that if it arises from the SONA, it will go to the department first and then the department will bring it to us. But so far we have not received anything regarding the deregulation that the, the, the president has talked about. On the issues of the figures of the section 189, I may not have captured this very well, uh, but we do have figures uh, on the section 189 and section 189A. And, and I think there's a part I missed up at uh, Mr. Bagram's question on this one uh, in relation to his concern on the 189s and the capturing. Of, but we do have figures that we kept on all the ones that are referred to us. The ones that are problems are those not referred to us, but they happen anyway. Uh, that should cover uh, Honorable Bakram's question, Jefferson. I'm moving at the fastest speed possible. Uh, on Honorable Dabe's question, um, this question is, is double-edged, actually. Um, the one part of the question, in terms of the alignment or capacity issue, there's two parts to it. In as far as the ICT part on the cyber um, attacks, we, we, by the way, we've also been a victim of cyber attack. Um, one thing that we know is that you cannot be completely immune from cyber attack, whatever you do, but you are expected to take sufficient steps to do so. We do. You will see that on, on that slide 32, where we are dealing with that. In as far as the financial and staff part of it in terms of alignment, if, if the, the question also caters for that, we have aligned in terms of the APP. And we'll also put capacity in terms of the human resource, but we are short in terms of human resource uh, to, to deal with the increase in cases and, and all of that. So we are short there. Uh, that's why we are a bit slower uh, in some of the cases to set them down and all of that. But we are, we are putting in sufficient effort to do that. The last question, uh, Chairperson, uh, it's on slide 24. Um, uh, that was asked about the fluctuation. I was a bit uh, slightly confused on the fluctuation part, but the way I understand it, yeah. uh, uh, he, he will be correct when he says that if you look at the entire target, the 2.1, 2.1 breaks into two 
on the indicators. But, and you also look at 23, 24, you will see that it, in the 23, 24, on the 2.1.1.1, it says eight. And then on the one in 2.1.1.2, it says four. If that's what this fluctuation means, it will be correct, even though it looks fluctuating. But if you look at the content of the target, they're different. The first one is the collective bargaining support processes, right? Which are conducted. And the second one deals with the pre-bargaining conferences uh, processes. And there are two completely different processes. So the numbers would not be the same because the content of it is also not the same. But to the extent that the fluctuation in numbers deals with our interventions and all of that, that is, you are correct when you say conditions, requests, and all of that, those are the factors that are influencing, in, in, including resources that are influencing to what extent we can get involved. Uh, so that the variation and the fluctuation therefore naturally will happen uh, because of the circumstance. But in, as far as the target is concerned, it is because the targets, the targets are different. I've answered it comprehensively on different sides in case you meant this one or you meant the other one. If it's just one, I just gave additional information on that. Uh, Chairperson uh, Mandiba and Bapu, I think I, I covered all the questions. If there's questions we did not understand properly, uh, I'm willing to, to answer it again if they can re-ask the question, Chairperson. Thank you. No, thank you very much. Uh, if if, uh, if there are other questions that the members feel that uh, they have not been uh, adequately, adequately answered, they will then write uh, to the department through the office of the of the hospital secretary. DM, is there any issue that you would like to? Is it still around? DM. Oh, okay. No, thank you very much, honorable members, and thank you very much, uh, 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 Dell and, and CCNA. We will uh, will appreciate. You know, at, at times, I don't know whether it's 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 how is the system, how the system has been structured that uh, when reports are uh, the, the structuring of the reports at times doesn't give uh, us a more, a, 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 a whole picture of, of what is then, uh, the, the picture of what we expect. So maybe in moving forward, please anticipate that. And even if there can be a, a, a flyer, a, an example is the issue of, of consequence management. I will also request the, uh, the executive director of, of, of CCMA if there is any information that you will think that uh, it would assist us to really have a more understanding and insight in terms of uh, people that are serviced by the 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 the, the entity which is SMA. If you do have that, the viewers' opinion. If I can, my understanding is that uh, there's a box in all departments uh, that says, uh, 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 "Please drop in your your complaints, your compliments, and whatever." If you do have that, even if it's not SMA only, but if even if it's the departments in terms of provinces. That would make us to have a, a, a broader understanding. And as we'll be preparing uh, for our legacy report, as this portfolio committee will also be guided by, by those, because remember, we're not forever on the ground. At times, we do meet uh, when we visit institutions, but there are those people that may not have an opportunity to interact with, and and those uh, that that information that is in those boxes, 
that we already see in any public institution. In this case, I'm referring to, 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 to the Department of Employment and Labor. And thank you very much. Maybe in, the, in, our, in our next meeting, which will be, uh, which will be next week, maybe we'll then get an, an, an update in terms of the impact of the strike to our to our in, in the Department of Employment and Labor in terms of provinces and regions, how has it uh, affected them? And and and, and it, because it, it it's affecting them, but it also in terms of service delivery. Having said that, honorable members, I want to make a humble reminder in particular to those members that will be traveling to Kenya. Today is the last day, is the day that you must have your, your, your yellow fever vaccine. It must not be tomorrow, please no, no excuse. If, if it's tomorrow, you are then going to put us in a very serious, in fact, you are putting yourself in a very serious uh, 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 challenge. So, uh, Make it, uh, please, every time check the WhatsApp. There's a WhatsApp group that has been uh, formed for those that are traveling. But what is important for today, today is your yellow fever uh, vaccine. If, if uh, members are in Cape Town, Parliament, please interact with Ms. Ndabeni. By the end of the day, we must get a report who has managed to be vaccinated and who has not, so that we're able to see where, what, what is the situation. But as I was told that uh, it's a, there's no compromise in terms of the yellow fever vaccine. Uh, having said that, thank you very much, uh, members. Our meeting stands at 10. We will we'll meet again next week. So bye. And, and, thank, and you. thank you. And thank you, the department for your presentation. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.